Welcome back to the Montreal Comedy Festival. It's Alex Belfield talking to the big stars. And Ari Shafir yeah. is one of the most legendary, outrageous, shocking, controversial comedians ever. Ari, how are you? How are you? It's, uh, it's overboard, but okay. Well, death threats and all sorts I'm yeah. reading about you. You're not very popular, are you? No, I'm very unpopular in many circles. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't death threatened many times. Do you actually make the choice when you wake up one day and go, I want to be a comedian, but I want to be an outrageous comedian opposed to Mr. Nice? No, I just I just do whatever I find is funny, and then if it falls on the wrong side of <laughs> the wrong side of nice, and I was like, all right, I guess that's where I am right now. Isn't it funny in two thousand and nine? It seems we've regressed in terms of our tolerance of comedy. Yeah, that's crazy, and it's like, how can we now somehow be less funny? Like, oh, there's more. Uh, you can't say things like that. I'm like, why? You, you understand? They're just words and jokes. They shouldn't have any any power, but they do, it's weird. And is it hard to think of new stuff? Because that's what always amazes me about you guys. You're working all year round. You're doing club after club after club. How do you have these magical thoughts? Dude, it kind of amazes me too. Like every once in a while, I'm like, that's it. I'm, I'm out now. I won't have anything else ever. You know, and you look at a guy like Carlin who has, you know, however many 15 specials. And like, how did you come up with that much stuff? I'll go through months where I'm, I don't have anything new. And I'm, I'm like, that's just, I guess I'm finished. I'm completely tough out, but then somehow, yeah, another pop, thought pops into your head and you're okay again. And what about that old thing of being a hack where people say, oh no, you can never do that. You never borrow a joke. Are, are there really that many new thoughts? No, I think, but I think it's your own version of a thought that's been out there. I think it was Woodrow Wilson who said that everything has been invented, has already been invented, like <laughs> before the computer, you know, like high power jets. And it's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? But yeah, most thoughts that are out there are pretty out there, the crazy father. And what about temptation when you're on the road? Because it's a very lonely business and you're staying yeah. in these crappy hotels everywhere. Oh, How do you deal with that? A lot of times comedy clubs, like staffs, like the waitress and waiters and stuff, they're cool so you can go out with them, you know, laid back. But at some point I'll get too old for that. And they'll be like, who's the old guy hanging out with? I'm right on the cusp right now, I'm 35, where I'm like, I'm still okay to hang out with them. But at some point, if I'm 45, whoa, you're away from your family for how long? <laughs> this is really kind of gross. <laughs> Five days a week, just on the road eating at subways and ugh, I, I kind of fear that like a lot of comics <laughs> like fear becoming that it'd still be nice to be able to create all the time and say whatever you want to say for a living and are you good to yourself do you treat yourself to a nice hotel so you're not in the motel on the corner for 35 dollars five bucks for five stars no way i'll just get a one-star hotel and save the five dollars <laughs> just a bed and you're, just, you're like feeling gross and like ugh, you can feel the bugs on you and like i should have splurged yeah, there's little things that you really should look back and like, for another 30 bucks, just treat yourself. And I always regret not doing it, but. And the heckles, you mentioned them. Do you have a certain stock list of lines to come no, back at? No, I won't do that. That's, that doesn't stay fresh. And a lot of comics will, and they'll be really good, but I, I just kind of want to be in the moment. Also, a lot of times I want to destroy you. So if I see you, I want to sum up who you are as fast <laughs> as I can in my head. Nothing like off the top, if like call you some sort of racial slur or anything, like it's sometimes too easy. But if I see you're, so you're a girl on the, on the cusp of getting into old age, where it's like, I, I know you're feeling bad about this already. I'm going to exploit it. Yeah, I try not to go with looks, per se. Like, the, I'm not saying looks. I'm saying, like, a hairstyle or stuff like that, because they chose that. But the prettier they are, the easier just me unload. <laughs> Plus, everyone else hates them for being pretty, you know? And can you have a room full of a thousand people laughing at you and one person who isn't, and you spend your entire night focusing on them? Yeah, it's hilarious. I love watching it more than anything. If I'm in the back of the room and I see somebody killing and one person <laughs> arms crossed, and it's like, what, do you not, are you not getting into this at all? Like, let go. The weirdest thing, sometimes those people come up to you afterwards, I'm like, that was hilarious. And I'm like, well, tell your face. Because it would have been nice. I was staring at you, staring at me the whole night. Yeah, it's weird. Some people get so angry. I love it too when people are like, that's not funny. And I'm like, did you hear? There was laughter. So clearly it was funny. Maybe you didn't find it funny. That's a different thing, which is totally allowed. Not everyone's for everyone, but I have insecurities, but I'm not going to let them out. I grew up at the comedy store in LA. That's right. I got my chops and, and we had a friend who's, who got pushed out of comedy because he was so angry and bitter. But his theory was, if you break up with a girl, you don't tell anyone at the comedy store for six months because you will cry in public because they they'll be relentless, just tormenting you. So you learn to hide your, your buttons, <laughs> but be okay with them too. So is it open season then between yourselves? Oh yeah, once we smell blood. <laughs> My dad used to have chickens in the backyard and when one of them got a cut, you had to separate that chicken because the other one's a peck of the death. And that's pretty similar to it. And we're friends, we like love each other, but it's like, oh, if I can destroy you right now, from the inside out, I'm going to take that chance. And we're doing this interview today at your hotel. Are you staying here? Yeah. 
Is it normal for guys to be walking around half naked outside when it's about seven o'clock at night and it's about 18 degrees? I've only been in Montreal one of the time. I don't know what the normal here is. I do know in Portland, I just found out, Portland, Oregon, you're allowed to be completely naked. No, that's not normal. I think it's weird. On July 4th, I actually slept over at a girl's house and didn't have a shirt. So I figured I'd go to like a convenience store and just get a cheesy I Love America shirt. <laughs> But I walked in there with no shirt on. I'm like, you coming in? And she goes, no, I'm not coming in with you with no shirt on. You're like a redneck. I'm not going anywhere near you. So it is awkward. I'll do it once in a while for last. But yeah, things like that, I kind of look the other way, try not to make eye contact. Ari, congratulations on being invited here to Montreal and to do this comedy festival, because it is big and it does mean you've made it, doesn't it? It's sort of a sign. My friends are like, it's nice to put on your resume to say like they've accepted you enough. And those shows are great. Those nasty shows are really great. The crowd knows it's called a nasty show, so they're not uptight. And do they look after you well? Do you get the suite in the first class on the plane? No first class. I asked for what's above first class, but they said you're not even getting first class. There's nothing above first class. Um, it was nice, though. The flight was nice. And, uh, yeah, the hotel is totally cool. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight in the nasty show. Them, but there's always a chance of the later ones being so rowdy that no <laughs> show can go on. One or two people in a room of 500 you can handle. Eight in a room of 500 becomes... Unmanageable. <laughs> it's just chaos. Is there a line where you actually give in? I, could, I mean, I know there's a bunch of you listening, but there's so much yelling at every... You start a, a set up. It's like, so I was at the store. Woo! Stores! And you're like, come on, dude. It's not even a place for it. Yeah, but, uh, it's tricky, though, isn't it? Because when you see the title, The Nasty Show, you presume that you're kind of invited to join in. Maybe. Maybe somewhat. And there is a way to join in in a good way. But the people who don't know what that way is will never know what that way is. And they don't know they've gotten it wrong. No, you weren't. Well, I can assure you I'll be staying stone cold silent because I don't want you picking on my <laughs> ginger hair. Enjoy it. Now I'll definitely pick on you. <laughs> Revolt. Ari, thank you very much for talking to me. Congratulations on being here. And I'll see you soon. Okay, cool.